Summary of Paralandra by C. S. Lewis A Cambridge philologist named Ransom is a good friend of Lewis's and they decide to spend a fall afternoon together. He is aware that Ransom has traveled to Mars, where he encountered heavenly beings known as Eldala. These beings reside in deep heaven, which is sometimes referred to as space. Lewis doesn't trust the Eldala and isn't sure if he wants to get involved with their business, but Ransom has asked him to help. Ransom said that Earth is being attacked by bad Eldala and that the good Eldala of deep space know about it. Lewis almost feels resistance and fear on his way to Ransom's house, but he keeps going for the sake of his friend. Ransom tells Lewis that night that he is being sent to Paralandra, which is another name for Venus. The evil Eldala on Earth are going to attack Paralandra in some way, and Ransom has been sent to stop them, but he doesn't know how. Lewis's job is to put Ransom in his spaceship and wait for him to come back. Ransom comes back from space a little more than a year after Lewis does what he says. After that, he tells Lewis this story. When Ransom lands on Paralandra, he sees a watery world with soft, rich colors, floating islands, tasty fruits, and friendly, cute animals. On his second day there, he meets a pretty woman who looks just like a person, but she's green. He and the green lady talk about their different lives for the next few days. For instance, both he and the lady know Maladil, or God. But God's plans for Earth have been different from his plans for Paralandra. The lady knows that Maladil came to Earth in the form of a person, but she doesn't understand that Maladil came to save people from their sins because she doesn't know what evil, a sin, or death are. In fact, she doesn't want anything else besides what Maladil sends, everything he gives her is good, and she always walks with him, so their wills are in perfect sync. Maladil has told the lady and her king, the only other being of her kind, they can't live on Paralandra's one and only fixed land. Even though she doesn't understand why he told her not to do this, it makes her happy to follow his rules. At this point in the talk, the lady and Ransom see something streak across the sky and fall into the water. The lady doesn't think much of it because she's looking for her king, so they ride fish that look like dolphins to the fixed land to find him. Once they get there, they see a small spaceship float on the water. That's when Ransom realizes that Weston, his old enemy and kidnapper on Mars, has come to Paralandra. Weston thinks that the best way to explore is to control the solar system and avoid death by enslaving or even destroying other species and worlds. Ransom is sure that he was sent to Paralandra to stop Weston. When Ransom and Weston meet, Weston gives Ransom a speech in which he says he has changed his mind about how to explore other planets. His new goal in life is to promote what he calls spirituality. He says that science has found the hidden meanings of old religious laws, and that he and Ransom both believe in spirit. For Weston, this spirit is a dark force that picked him and leads him. He says that God and the devil are really just two different names for the same spirit or force. On top of that, regular people are always stuck in simple morals and mistake and insult the great ones who are led by spirit. Ransom argues with Weston about all of this and says that their views are nothing alike. This makes Weston very angry, and he passes out. Weston is not there for the next morning. On his way to a faraway island, Ransom rides a fish and hears the green lady and Weston talking. They are talking about Maladil's rule that people can't live on the fixed land. Weston says that the rule doesn't make any sense and that Maladil might want the lady to question his rules. The lady doesn't seem interested at first, which gives Ransom hope. But the next day, he finds Weston cutting up small, helpless animals. It's the first time he's ever seen anyone on Paralander hurt. He sees that some evil living thing is taking over Weston's body in order to invade Paralandra and corrupt it. After a while, Ransom finds the two of them still fighting with the lady about Maladil and the fixed land. He changes what it means to follow by saying that Maladil wants his creatures to act like they don't want to do what he says so they can learn more. Ransom speaks up and says that Maladil wants to be followed because he loves you, not just because his orders make sense. Weston, whom Ransom starts to think of as the unman, 
tells the lady a lot of stories about women who were misunderstood and mistreated but did great things for the sake of humanity over the next few days. Ransom knows that Weston is trying to make disobeying Maladil sound like a job that she needs to do, even though Maladil hasn't been clear about this. Ransom feels that the future of Paralandra, whether it stays pure or turns evil, is in his hands. Ransom isn't sure what he can do to stop Weston now that his counterarguments haven't worked. Over time, he realizes that he needs to fight Weston in order to stop him from changing the lady and her world, even though it doesn't seem likely at first. The next day, Ransom finds the unman and quickly fights him because he kills animals for no reason and makes fun of Maladil. Ransom learns that Weston is actually just another middle-aged scholar, even though he has an evil form living inside him. This gives Ransom a chance. But Weston gets away, and Ransom has to chase after him for hours, riding a fish over the water in a strange, lonely chase that makes him question his faith in Maladil. As they are about to crash into the coast of a very faraway island, Weston pulls Ransom deep into the water. When they get to a beach, Ransom chokes Weston in the dark. He finally figures out that they are in a huge cave, but it's very dark inside, so it takes him a long time to find his way. He finds the unman's broken body again deep inside the cave, hits it with a rock, and throws it into a sea of fire. After a trip through the cavern that feels like a dream, he finally falls asleep from tiredness. Ransom goes on an adventure to see more of the huge island after a long, restful sleep at the mouth of the cave. His path leads him through a high mountain pass in the end. A familiar space capsule is sitting in a clearing, and Ransom can feel that the Oyarses from Mars and Venus are close. The two Eldala say that the Green Lady and her king will take the throne today. This is the first time that two animals made in Maladil's image have refused to sin and instead become what they were meant to be. He and the Eldala both bow down to the king and queen when they see them. As a way to trick the unman, the king and queen say that they now know what evil is, but they didn't learn about it by sinning themselves. Instead, they learned about it from Maladil's lessons. The king and queen have big plans to love ruling over Paralandra for a very long time. But one day, the king and the Eldala of Deep Heaven will work with Maladil to free Earth from its troubles and clean it of all its bad things. Rather than being the end, he says, that will be the start of everything being the way it should be. He calls it the Great Dance. After this, the king and queen, the Eldala, and Ransom give a long list of speeches or gifts about how great and beautiful Maladil is. Ransom is shocked to find out that a whole year has passed after this event is over. The king and queen bless him and help him get ready for his trip to Earth in the pod. The Eldala then come to take him home. About the author. C.S. Lewis was born in Northern Ireland. Lewis, who was given the name Jack as a child, grew up in East Belfast in a house that his parents and brother Warren called Little Leah. Lewis loved spending time in his dad's huge library as a child. His mother died of cancer when he was about 10 years old. Lewis went to Oxford University in 1916, but he was sent to France right away to fight in the First World War. After getting hurt in 1918, he went back to Oxford to study English literature, philosophy, and the classics. His job was to teach English literature at Oxford's Magdalen College from 1925 to 1954. Lewis was a strong skeptic until he was in his teens. In 1931, he became a Christian and stayed a faithful member of the Church of England for the rest of his life. During World War II, he gave a series of radio talks that were the base for his famous book of defense of Christianity, Mere Christianity. In 1954, Lewis was named Chair of Literature in the Middle Ages and the Renaissance at Magdalene College, Cambridge University. Lewis died in 1963. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.